title of my sermon today is simply Such Treasure. Such Treasure. Such Treasure. I've got to tell you, I'm so excited about this sermon. And you might say, why are you excited about it? Because it's, it's, it's different. <laughs> and you say... That's what they all say. That's what it's meant to be. That's why we come back every week. Because if you preach the same service every week, sermon every week, it wouldn't be different. We'd get bored. We'd, that wouldn't work. No, it's different. As I sat down to prepare this message, it went left on me. How many of you ever have a thought and it goes left? You're thinking down a certain line and you're aware of a line, but then it goes left. That's what happened with this sermon. I was preparing it, getting ready for you today. And as I'm just looking into the Word of God, I had a realization, I had a revelation, I had a moment in God where I thought, hey, how many of you know that moment? Hey, how many of you have had a hey moment this week? How many of you have been praying this week? Can I encourage you, get ready for your a moment every week. Get ready for your A moment every day. Always enter the presence of God with expectation that God is going to turn up. Come on, you can do more than that. God is going to turn up and God is going to speak to you. Get ready for your A moment. All right, that's what happened. Here we go. Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a, is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it, hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field and to get the treasure too. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl merchant on the outlook, on the lookout, sorry, for choice pearls. How many of you girls would like pearls for Christmas? Girls like pearls. No girls want pearls. Are they old fashioned? What have I done wrong here? What have I done wrong? It's like, how many of you girls would like pearls? Oh, not really. Uh, could I have a chicken and chips? Uh, so I'm like, no girls want pearls. How many of you girls want diamonds? Yeah. Well, we're not offering those. All right. <laughs> no, no diamond for you. No, no, no. Look at me. Look at me. All right. All right. So when he discovered a pearl of great value, a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. As we come around God's Word today, uh, for the next few minutes, I, I, I want to ask you, what would you sell the farm for? What would you sell the farm for? M meaning, what would you give everything for? What would you sell everything for? What in life would you trade everything for? Uh, uh, there, there's so much in life, let's face it, there's so much out there in life that glitters, absolutely glitters. It looks appealing. It, it looks desirable. It, it, it has a way of calling us in, calling us in, calling us in. In life today, as we come around the Word of God today, what in life, as we get ready for 2020, would you sell the farm for? If you know me, there's, there's many things that I enjoy. I, I, li I live life to the full. I enjoy life. And, and as Pastor Reverend Dr. Mick would know, uh, one of the things I enjoy are cars. How many, how many of you like cars? How many of you would like a new car? <laughs> All right. So everyone who raised their hands, you're going to get the keys on the way out because they're out there in the car park. We're bringing them in as we speak. How many of you would like a car now? Well, you missed out. All right. You missed out. You, 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 you can hang out with the pearl people out there later on. You can, you can start a, a little group together, a little care group and help each other out. All right. Not really. I, I'm a car guy. I'll go and search for cars. And Mick's been with me when we've hopped in on a plane and, and, and flown to Adelaide looking at old cars. I like old cars. I like new cars. I like uh, white cars, red cars, green cars, blue cars. I like all the cars. If they got V8s, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you know if Jesus was here, he would drive a V8? <laughs> it's true, isn't it? You say, what scripture is it in? It's in one of the, I don't know. It's in there. It's in there somewhere. It's not really in there, but I reckon he would. You know what I'm saying? I just reckon he would. I'd reckon he'd probably... Come on, a, come on a Mustang or something like that, or a white stallion at least, whatever, all right. I, I like cars, you like whatever. I'm sure most of us as we come to Christmas again this year are looking for or searching for treasure, uh, for pearls of great price, treasure and pearls that will bring health and life and reward into our emotions and into our relationships, our spiritual lives, families, finances, etc. So our eyes are open and Typically, I think most people are living life like this. Our eyes are wide open, our minds are sharp and alert. We're up and about and we're looking for the pearl of great price. How many of you know that's, that's just, it's, in with, it's inherent within all of us 
excuse me, we're looking for the moment, we're looking for the breakthrough, we're looking for the treasure, we're looking for the pearl. Now, we all know that when Jesus spoke this illustration of the pearl merchant, he was referring to the, those who would find the kingdom of God. And everybody said, yeah. amen. We understand this. We know what the passage is about. It's about those who come up and find the kingdom of God. Now, this room is full of all sorts of people that have been searching for treasure. You were searching for treasure, searching for, for life. And many of us, isn't it true, were searching in all the wrong places. Would that be true? <laughs> Just me. Uh, four of you like, yeah. <laughs> the others are like, I'm not saying anything. Who told on me? No, no, no. Uh, many of us were searching in all the wrong places. But then one day, one day, we came across, we stumbled across, uh, we discovered the pearl of greatest price, heaven's angel that had, had been given to humanity. Uh, and we were prepared to trade our old life for the life that Christ has got for us. So we're all in search mode. We're looking, 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 looking for the pearl, looking for the treasure, looking for the pearl, looking for the treasure, looking for breakthrough, looking for that that's going to give us life and life to the full. We were searching all over the place, yet, and somehow we stumbled across. Oh, whatever. Somehow we came across. I don't think so. Somehow we discovered. I don't think it was just like that. Not, not for a minute do I actually believe it happened just like that. But at some point in time, we discovered Jesus, and in that moment, we were prepared to exchange the old life for the new life. The old life for what Christ had for us. So we sold the farm. How many of you know that's what we did? How many of you can remember the day you sold the farm? Yeah. You say, what it's like. how many of you remember the day that you made a decision, I'm going to give away my old life and I'm going to live a new life in Christ. I'm going to receive the love, the forgiveness, the joy, the peace, the healing, the wholeness. And we said, we will sell the farm. We're going to exchange everything we have for this new life that we can have in Christ. I remember it like it was yesterday. So we sold the farm. We exchanged our ashes for his beauty. Isn't that the truth? We exchanged our sorrow for his joy, our pain for his glory. And what a beautiful exchange it has been. The old for the new. And so it is that when Jesus came into our lives, we were made alive in him to live for him, to live for the glory of God. And we chose to sell the farm, to give the old life away to embrace the new life in Christ, which is why he commands us now to be baptized and to baptize, to be baptized and to baptize. Friends, can I encourage you, if you have not yet been baptized, get yourself baptized. You may say, Shane, I was baptized as an infant. I was baptized as a baby. My parents baptized you. Well, praise God for the faith that they had, but it had nothing to do with you. You did not make a choice. That was not your choice. And I, I say praise God for the faith because that's what they knew what to do. They did their best. They introduced you to the church. They introduced you to the kingdom in that way. But how many of you know there comes a moment in all of our life where we need to choose? We need to choose. Jesus was dedicated as a baby. As a baby. He went to, he was dedicated as a baby. But then at the right time, he was baptized in full immersion. He made a decision, a public decision. The old life is gone. The new life has come. And how many of you know Jesus never sinned in his old life? So when he made this statement, it's a statement to all of us because we have all been sinners. We are going to be dead to sin. We now need to be dead to sin and alive to God. That's what baptism is all about. Praise God. You can give God praise. Don't give him a half a praise. Give God a whole praise because we're dead to sin. And now we're alive in Christ, which is really, that's what baptism is all about. It is symbolic that we have, we have given the old life away. We have sold the farm and everything that, that is surrounding it and connected to it. We are saying no more are we going to live this lifestyle, but now we choose to embrace a life that is in Christ. Romans chapter 6 verse 4 says, we were therefore buried. Everyone say buried. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, is the old man still in the grave or does he get out and party, party, party a little bit? Just asking the question now. Is the old man dead still? Or is he coming back occasionally? It's like, you know, all these zombie movies. You know what that's about, don't you? It's all the old men coming out of the grave. All the old self coming out of the grave. The, the old self is need, needs to be in the grave. Buried, buried. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death. In order that, listen to this, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too 
may live a new life. Praise God. Romans 6 verse 11 tells us that we're to count ourselves dead to sin and alive to Christ. In fact, this is what it says in the same way, Romans 6 verse 11, in the same way, count yourselves dead. D-E-D, -E -D, dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And in all of this, we, we have the essence of why Christmas is so important to all of us who are believers. Where are the believers? If you're a believer, this is why Christmas is so important. There are parts of the church that are saying, we are not going to celebrate Christmas anymore because they don't like, they don't like the trees. It's like some sort of devil worship, they reckon. I reckon, I don't, know, I don't know what they're putting in their juice, you know, in their punch, the Christmas punch, but I just don't, that's harsh, I know. It's probably not helpful, but it's true. I'm like, I'm not a devil worshiper because I have a tree. What I want to do, I will use a tree. I'll, I'll, I'll use anything I can get my hands on that is going to get someone to stop and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ saves Jesus Christ saves. Jesus Christ forgives. Jesus Christ came from heaven to earth. Jesus Christ lived a sinless life. Jesus Christ went to the cross and paid the price. Jesus Christ rose from the dead that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have eternal life. So, so don't tell me I can't have a tree. It's a tree. It's got the devil in it. It's a beautiful tree. Praise God for the trees. He made them. He made them. I'm not worshipping the tree. I'm a carpenter. I chopped them down and made houses out of them. <laughs> Moving right along to all the greenies, we love you. All right. Got to, whatever. All right. <laughs> but this is the essence of Christmas, that Jesus came, laid down his life, that, that whoever would believe in him, We'd be able to step into the waters of baptism and die to self and come out and live a new life in Christ. That we'd be able to turn our back on the old and embrace the new. I, I, I love it because we have found, we have found, if you're a believer today, we have found the pearl of great price. And that's why we're prepared to sell the farm. We'll trade the old life because there was nothing really good in it anyway. We will trade the old life to embrace the new life. But, 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 but as we come to this moment now, I'm wondering... Uh, is it possibly a different perspective? Can we bring a, a different perspective to our key verse today, which, by the way, has been shared in context. It's not as though sometimes I hear people put a, 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 bring a new thought into a verse, but what they do is they completely wreck it. <laughs> they, they just take it out of context and make it say what they want it to say. But I'm wondering if we might be able to look at Scripture today and see another perspective on what we know to be the pearl of great price and the, the, the whole gospel of salvation. And those who find Christ, we, we find the kingdom of God. We, we turn our, our back and, and we give it all for the pearl, which is Jesus. I get that. But I'm wondering, is there another perspective that we may be able to see in the Word today? Is there another way we might be able to look at it? And the reason I want to bring a different perspective is simply because I'm sure many of us have never considered the obvious Obvious. Everyone say obvious. obvious. Turn to the person beside you and say it's obvious. obvious. Turn to the person you like less on the other side of you and say <laughs> it's still obvious. <laughs> we'll go to the person we love, we know. I don't know who you are. <laughs> All right. All right. Let, let's, let's think about this. Let's think about this. I say it's obvious, but many, I, I, I've never seen it like this. But it's obvious. Ephesians 1, reading from verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Everyone say blessed us. Yes. How many of you know he has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ? He has not holding, he's not holding anything back. He wants to pour it out. It's Christmas time. We talk about gifts. Well, I've got to tell you, God has got gifts for you. God has got a life for you. God has got blessing for you. God has got favor for you. He wants to pour out every spiritual blessing upon us in Christ Jesus. For he chose us. Who chose who? It's not a trick question. Who chose who? He chose us. It's interesting, isn't it? For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He chose us in him 
to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us to be adopted as His sons through Jesus Christ, in accordance with His pleasure and will, to the praise of His glorious grace, which He has freely given us in the one He loves. I like that. I like that. In Him, we have the redemption. We have redemption through His blood. In Him, we have redemption through he you can see where this is going isn't it we're thinking we sold the farm (laughs) maybe not maybe we're just responding to the one who really did because in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding and he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ Praise God. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. I think I said that before. Uh, To be put into effect when the times, when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ Jesus. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, everybody that's in the courtroom today, could I put forward, could I propose, could I, could I humbly submit to you that maybe there's another way we could look at it? Matthew chapter 13, verse 45 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When, when he discovered, when who discovered? When he discovered. When, when, when he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Could it be that it wasn't us who sold the farm? Now, you might be like, Shane, are you trying to mess with our heads? Absolutely. Because if I can get to your head, maybe we can get to your heart. We'll, we'll start here and let it fall down. You know what I'm saying? Uh, could it be, could it be, I'm just asking again, could it be that it wasn't us who sold the farm? that we might have relationship with God. But could it be that it was actually God who sold the farm? Could it be that it was actually Jesus who sold the farm? Could it be that it was actually Jesus who actually took the first step here? Could it be that it was Jesus who did everything that we might enter into relationship, not just with him, but with the Father as well? Could it be that even though we understand what he's saying when it comes to the kingdom of heaven, and it's like a pearl merchant, yeah, we understand the pearl of great price. We understand the angel of heaven. We understand we are turning our back on the old life to embrace the new life. That's absolutely true. But could it be that it's actually only a response to what God has already done? Could it be that it's a response to the love that we have been shown? Could it be that it's a response to the gift that we have already received from God? In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, it says, Your attitude, brothers and sisters, my attitude today should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. My attitude needs to be the same as His attitude. He's my example. I'm the follower. He's my Lord. I'm His disciple. I'm not coming up with a new idea here to sell the farm and sell everything that I might follow him and come into relationship with him. I'm only following his example. He's the one who's already done it all. He's the one who's already given it all. He's the one who's already laid down his life that whoever would believe in him would have life and have it to the full. Our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped in other words held on to but made himself nothing for all the Germans made himself nothing made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross huh Our attitude needs to be the same as Jesus' attitude, who did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, held on to. But no, 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 no. He humbled himself, became a man, laid down his life, died, died, that we might have relationship with the Father. I'm wondering who sold the farm? Who sold the farm? And if it was Jesus who actually sold it, why would he sell it? Why would he sell it? Huh. I'm thinking maybe from today we've got another 
way to view this verse. In Romans chapter eight, uh, 5 from verse 8, it says, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While we were still sinners, Christ came and died for us. That tells me before I sold the farm, he sold the farm. Before I found him, he found me. He found me. I, I, I'd been looking for a treasure. Maybe the Lord had been looking for treasure. And maybe he found the treasure. Maybe, maybe there's another way we can look at this whole passage and, and just uh, come to a place of understanding where it, it's not just us pursuing God, but God pursued us first. It's not just us laying down our life to serve a holy God, but he, served, he laid down his life that we might come into relationship with him. Uh, could it be that, that God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we're still sinners? And, and since we have been made right in God's sight, by the blood of Christ. I understand this. There's a lot of people today that think that, well, if I'm a good person, you're not that good. You're not that good. And you say, well, you don't know who I am. I don't need to know who you are. You're not that good. Your wife spoke to me. <laughs> you're not that good. We all know we're not that good. I know we like to say, yeah, 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 I'm good. But no, we're not good. None of us are good. None of us are righteous. Not even one. Only God is righteous. Only God is righteous. That's why it takes His righteousness to cleanse us from our sin that we might be made right in the eyes of a holy God. And He loves you. He loves you. And since we've been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, He will certainly save us from God's judgment. Praise God. For since we were restored to friendship with God, by the death of his son, this is how it happened now, by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be del delivered from eternal punishment by his life. So now we can rejoice. Everyone say rejoice. rejoice. That wasn't bad, but you can do better. How many of you know you can't say rejoice? Like, rejoice. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Now we're going to go. Where am I? So now we can rejoice. In our wonderful new relationship with God. In our, in our what? In our wonderful new relationship with God. Some of you are like, where do you get those moves from? You've seen Pastor Mick dance, haven't you? Every Thursday afternoon we get together and he just shows me a new move. You all know that one? All right. Yeah, that's good. You like that? I've been practicing, Mick. I've been practicing. I've actually got a, a poster of Mick on the wall. It says Mickey Night Fever or something down the bottom. Rejoice. Everyone say rejoice. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God. I, I can't help but do. It's like, how many of you remember what it was like when you were dead? In your sins and you're searching and you're searching and you're searching and searching and searching and then Jesus comes along and you discover Christ for yourself and I was like all of a sudden that the heaviness is lifted off you the weight is taken away and you got some spring and you got some dance and it's like you're breathing again you got breath in your lungs and you can praise God you got breath in your lungs and you can praise the Lord. You've got breath in your lungs. All because of this new wonderful relationship you now have with God. All because, all because of what our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us in making us friends with God. When God found me, I was as lost, as lost, as lost could be. I've been lost before. As in many of you have heard the stories when, my, when the police and the, the news channels was, would search for my father and I because we were lost in the bush or, or in a canoe paddling around Snake Island and they thought we drowned and helicopters and all the rest of that. I've been lost in the natural. But I kind of tell you, there's nothing worse than being lost in your home. There's nothing worse than being lost in your workplace. There's nothing worse than being in a crowd like this where you know exactly where you are geographically, but on the inside you're as lost as lost. 
Friends, if that's how you feel today, I can encourage you because God knows where you are. Regardless of how lost and broken I was, I was still so, so valuable to Him. I, I can't help but just, just say thank you, Jesus, because I was lost. I was broken. I was sinning. I was away from God. I didn't want to be found by God. I wanted to run from God. I'm like, I'm sick of the Jesus freaks that are always in my face telling me about the love of God. <laughs> Whatever. As if I did not want to know about it. But if you were to, maybe not you, but if I was to ask myself, are you lost? I knew I was lost. I was hurting. I was broken. I was in pain. And I was lost. But man, but in that place, I was still so valuable to Him, which is a part that sort of leaves me wondering, why, Lord, would you leave heaven and come and search for me? Why, Lord, would you leave heaven? Why would you, why would you step away from the Father and come to earth in the knowledge that you're going to die a brutal death on a cross? Why would you do that for me? Like, I can understand for the nice guys. I can understand for the good girls. I can understand it for righteous people, as it were, that were trying to do the right thing. But I was working hard at doing the wrong thing. And yet, still, you loved me so much. I was still so valuable to you that you would leave eternity. You would step out of eternity. You would leave the Father's side and you would come in search for me. I was still so valuable. My well being. My emotional well-being, my relational well-being, my physical well-being, of course, my spiritual well-being was of such high importance to Him that it was actually He who sold the farm and gave it all so that anyone who would believe in Him wouldn't perish but would have eternal life, life to the full. Friends, can I say this to you today? You are so valuable to God. You are so valuable to God. Each and every one of you, I just wish, I wish, I wish for just a moment we could feel the love that God has for us. I just wish for a moment we might have an understanding of how He views us. Many of us have grown up in situations and places and families and where there hasn't been a lot of value put on our life. But I want to say to you today, from heaven's point of view, you are so valuable. From heaven's point of view, you are so valuable that Jesus would step out of eternity. He would leave the Father's side. He would come to earth and He would lay down His life for you because you are so valuable. You are so valuable. And I know, I know, I, I know what the Scripture says, for God so loved the world, meaning all of us. But i got to tell you, if all of us was just you by yourself, He still would have come because you are so valuable. Because you are so valuable. He loves you so much. You might be like, but I'm not worthy. I know you're not worthy. That's a point. If you were worthy, he wouldn't have needed to come. But when he found you, you weren't worthy. When, you, when he found you, you were separated because of your sin, not his sin, because of your sin. But when he found you, still, you were like the treasure. You were like the pearl of great value. He found you, he found you, he found you. And he came and he came and he came. And his love continues to come from one generation to the next generation to the next generation. It continues to reach, reach, reach for all of us. He sold the farm that we might have life.